Hello and welcome to Baking Lady Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to make the most quintessential of English tea time treats. I'm going to show you how to make a scone and they are just the most simple thing to do once you know all the basic tricks and tips. So this is what we're going to be making. They are absolutely delicious. They're light and they're soft and they're fluffy and they are just so easy to make as I said as long as you know the tips and the tricks. So we're going to start off with 225 grams of self-raising flour. I put mine straight into the bowl and I'm just going to add the rest of my ingredients. So the first thing I'm going to add is an Italian pinch of salt. This is three fingers, it's just a really good pinch so that goes straight in. I'm also going to add some baking powder. Baking powder just will give it a lovely rise and just make sure that you have a level half a teaspoon. Sprinkle that in as well. And the next thing I'm going to add in is 40 grams of caster sugar. Caster sugar can go in at this stage. Make sure you get all of that out as well. And I use the American way of just giving it a little mix with a whisk, a wire whisk. You don't need to sieve it, although that sieving will add air and remove any foreign objects in your flour. These days there's very likely, unlikely to be anything in your flour, so just give it a little whisk. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is add in my butter. I've got 75 grams of butter, so just chuck all that in now. And I'm going to make breadcrumbs with my finger, so this is nice and quick. You should have your butter at uh, chilled but it is a lot easier if it's just come into room temperature but you don't want it too warm. And the trick is to use the tips of your fingers. You want to produce a nice even breadcrumb. If your fingers are very, very warm, try putting them into some cold water beforehand. I have very cold fingers, so I actually make very good pastry and very good scones. So I'm just gonna make this into breadcrumbs very quickly. nearly done and as soon as you've got it into breadcrumbs you're going to add in your next ingredients now you can make these plain or you can make them with fruit in i'm going to make this batch with some fruit in um, i've got some sultanas which i've put in some boiling water with a earl grey tea bag it just gives them a lovely flavor and it makes the, the fruit so juicy it's fantastic so, just get rid of my flour off my fingers. Your fingertips are actually the coolest parts of your hands, which is why you do use your fingertips. So, here I've got 80 grams of fruit. I've used sultanas, and I've put them. I've just covered it in some boiling water with a tea bag. And all I need to do now is just to strain this and remove the tea bag. It does give them a really lovely soft flavour of Earl, Grey, of Earl Grey tea. So give that a really nice bash. Okay. And that is now going to go into my flour mixture. So I'm going to sprinkle those in. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my milk. Now I'm using a mixture of natural milk and natural yogurt and I'm going to put two tablespoons of milk in. This I found in America is absolutely brilliant but if you haven't got one of these just use an ordinary tablespoon just like this and I'm going to add in another two tablespoons as well. You will use probably about four tablespoons plus an egg and my egg is here and I'm just going to beat that with my knife just to mix that up and throw that in as well. Okay, that's all the ingredients that you need. Now you need to get your hands in here, it's not going to be a nice clean mix. So one hand to hold your bowl and one hand to just bring it ever so gently together. 
The secret with scones is to use as little effort as possible. You don't want to be working this like you would a bread dough. You want to be as gentle as possible. This will give you a lovely light rise and it will make sure that your scones are soft and light and fluffy. So often people use a very heavy hands and they try and just throw it into the bowl and think that they're kneading bread. And people will say to me, why do my scones not rise? Why are they so heavy? And this is why. Okay, so as soon as you've got your mixture together, you're going to tip it out onto your work surface. And again, you want to use as little energy and effort as possible. Treat it like your baby. Okay, onto your work surface. Get it off of your fingers. I can smell it already. It smells gorgeous. Now, the next trick is to use as little flour as you possibly can. I'm just going to sprinkle mine on the top. And what you're going to achieve is a smooth surface on the top. So as soon as you have a smooth surface on the top, like that, then stop. Let me just get rid of the excess off my hand. Perfect. Okay, and now you're going to pat it down. Just pat it, you don't need to use a rolling pin. So just pat your mixture down and you want to go to about two centimetres if it starts to stick and use a little tiny bit of extra flour but you really, really don't want to use very much at all. If you add too much flour, you're going to change the texture and you're going to change how moist it is inside. So you're just going to pat it down until it's about two centimetres, as I said, thick. No thinner than that. The larger the scones, the thicker you need to make your mixture. Now I'm going to use a 58 millimetre cutter. And there's two sides to mine. There's the fluted or there's the plain. And you need to use the plain, really. You can use the fluted if you really want, but I just prefer it. Okay. Now, if you rub your cutter in a little bit of flour, you can hear me doing it, but you can't see me, then you will get a good cut. And all you're going to do is push through and then just remove it and put it onto your baking tray. Do not be tempted to wiggle your cutter. If you wiggle your cutter, you're going to close off that texture. So just be very gentle and push through. If your cutter starts to stick, put a little bit of flour on it and cut through again. So don't be tempted to wiggle. And pop them out. And I'm just putting them onto my cu cutting, onto my tray. Okay, you can clean them off at this stage. first ones that you cut out are always the best, always the nicest. And I'm going to bring my mixture together again, removing all that excess flour, you don't want it on there, and just bring it together until you get a nice smooth surface, pat it down again, and then cut out again. I'm probably going to get another one out of this mixture. Okay, and for my last roll, nice and easy, just make sure that once again, what you don't want is to get this horrible cracked effect on the top. So just make sure that it is nice and smooth, but to the same thickness, and I'm going to cut out once more my last one. So out of this mixture, you will get eight. Okay, I've got them onto my baking tray already. And the next thing I'm going to do is just brush them with a little bit of egg and milk that I made earlier. And you only want to brush the very, very tops. Do not be tempted to brush down the sides. If you brush down the sides, you're going to close the dough back off again, which means that uh, your scones won't rise nicely and they will be heavy and they'll also be lopsided too. So just brush the very, very tops with your milk. There we go. 
the difference between scones and pastry is just how wet it is. You would never make a pastry as wet as this, but you want a lovely light rise. Okay, that's me done. Now, once you've done this, you have to let it rest for half an hour. Put it somewhere on the side. You don't need to put it in the fridge, but just leave your scones to rest for half an hour. This allows the gluten to relax and then you don't get a really tight scone. So just leave them alone for half an hour. I'm gonna leave mine on the side and I'm just gonna show you very quickly, moving my mess. They're gonna bake for about eight to 10 minutes. You want to put them in the oven about 200 degrees for a fan oven, 220 for an ordinary oven and about gas mark seven if you have a gas oven. And I'm just going to show you now how good they look. So, there's your scone. Once they come out of the oven, they should be a lovely light golden brown on the top. Break them up. And then you can put some compote on them, which is the way that I like to do it. Put some delicious compote on the top. This is strawberry compote. All I did was boiled off some strawberries and a little sugar. And then I've also got the thing that makes an English strawberry and cream scone just so delightful. I've got some clotted cream here as well. And that is an English tea in a bite. Happy baking. You'll find more recipes on my website, www.bakinglady.webs.com. Happy baking and I look forward to seeing you again soon.